What's going on, everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. So Michigan State loses at Illinois 16-38 to on Saturday. Uh, kind of a weird game, a game in which for a lot of people felt like it was over as soon as the availability report came out. And what was it, about five defensive back slash safeties, corners, the mix in the defensive back room. We're out. Um, some names that you thought were coming back after got banged up last time out, thought that, you know, maybe with the bye week, they would be good enough to come back. But when that availability report came out, um, there was a lot of concern going in. I think this is a game that Michigan State hung in for a while. I don't think that there was many instances of them being overwhelmed besides, you know, really in the fourth quarter getting outscored 14 to nothing. But, you know, it, it really came down to a couple things, which we're going to talk about here. Before we do jump into it, though, if you could just hit that like and subscribe button down there. More Michigan State football content. Two more games left, guaranteed, in the regular season. If you can get those two wins, go in bowling for the first time in three years. So, really would like to secure these next two wins. But let's just talk about this Illinois game. So, 38-16, to 16, um, I feel like the score isn't indicative. Now, I'm not saying Michigan State played good by any means, any stretch of the imagination. They did not play good at all and did not deserve to win this game. I mean, they just didn't do enough good things. I do think there was some good things that you can take from this. Now, I'm not going to say the world is sunshine and rainbows in terms of Michigan State football. There's a lot of stuff going on here. But given the circumstances of this game, I think there's some positive. Maybe that's just the type of person I am. I can always try to find one or two things that you can take positive out of this. But the unfortunate part is there was a lot more negative to come from this game. Um, really, it, it starts with the coaching decision. I got to I gotta start here is the coaching decision really at the end of the first half. Uh, Illinois has the ball uh, with about a minute 30-ish, I think it was, like a minute 35 left. It, Michigan State forces them to a third down and three. And everyone's like, okay, Michigan State, take a timeout. They still had their timeouts in the bag. You take a timeout, you get the ball back. You have time to at least get down, get a field goal, make it a, it was 21 to nine at halftime. You at least get a field goal, make it 21 to 12, a nine point game going into halftime. Everyone is thinking this. Um, don't call a timeout. Just let the clock roll down. Michigan State gets the ball back some 20-some-odd seconds, I believe, and just takes a knee. Uh, I was like, I was trying to rationalize it in my brain. Maybe that's just because I always try to, like, there's got to be some rational reason why we're going this route, why we're not doing this, why we're not doing this. Um, I was like, oh, maybe they want to save the timeouts because they're, you know, liking some of the action they get on some of the crossing or post routes that, you know, go in the middle of the field. Yes, the clock stops there, but maybe they want to hang on to those timeouts to, you know, work that. They don't feel comfortable wanting to work the sideline. Maybe that, like, whatever. Maybe that's what I was thinking. That, but then you just kneel the ball out to end the half. Like, I, I literally, I was lucky enough to be sitting in the um, MSU advancement, you know, it was like a season ticket event thing that was in the MSU football practice facility. Amazingly cool event. I still can't believe got to sit there, but was watching the game in there. And I literally like, I, I should have looked around and seen what everyone else's reaction was, but I literally just buried my face in my hands. Cause I'm like, what are we doing here? I'm not trying to win this game at all. Um, I do think Michigan state's first drive right out of halftime was solid 10 plays, 75 yards, Came down, they actually went for it twice. They, twice they went for it for a fourth and four around midfield, and then they went for it on a fourth and two that was like kind of backed up to a goal line. They could have got a first down at like the two or three yard line. And then Aiden Childs made a nice pass to Nate Carter to get in the end zone. But then that, that was that. Illinois got a field goal uh, shortly thereafter, I think the next possession. And then in the fourth quarter, it, there were some opportunities there, and Illinois just put up 14 points to your zero points. And again, more second half, fourth quarter struggles. You come out of the halftime, you look really good, and then just 17 nothing to end the game. So that is very disappointing, and I think the most disappointing part here is there was opportunities. There was opportunities here for Michigan State to win this game. Illinois, I'm sorry, is not like, yes, they. we talked about it in the preview show. They're, they're a good team. They're a solid team. They have some good pieces, but they are nothing compared to Ohio State, Oregon, Indiana. Like, 
even their defense to the level of Iowa and Michigan that you've played in the last month and a half. This is a game that Illinois at home was only what six and a half favorites, or no, they weren't. It wasn't even six and a half. I think it was what three and a half going into the game. Like I forget what it closed at. I apologize, but they were not overwhelming favorites favorites for a reason. Because Michigan State should have been able to hang in this game. I think that is the most frustrating part. I mean, Luke Altmaier, you got to give him credit. I, I, uh, Illinois' offensive line, he was getting pressured for a good amount of the game. And that's been Michigan State's problem for the better part of almost two months, not being able to get home to the quarterback. They were getting to the quarterback. They were just not able to finish. They came so, they came so close a couple times. Two almost getting home. Chris Bogle a couple of times. A couple other guys had some pressures. Um, Jordan Turner, uh, tackle for loss there. Ed Woods, tackle for loss. Um, Nikai Martinez came screaming in on a blitz there late in the game. Almost got there. But that is the that is the frustrating part. Jalen Thompson as well. I forget if I mentioned him. But, I mean, that's the thing. You were getting close, but you were not finishing. To a little bit, you got to give credit to Luke Altmaier for getting out of those. And, you know, getting out and still making plays. I think he had a... Solid game, little above average game, 19 for 32, 231, two touchdowns. Um, on the ground though, five for 20, you know, had a 13 yard run. I think that was on a third down too, which was a backbreaker if I, if I'm remembering correctly. But I mean, listen, the, the defensive backfield, as banged up as they have been, Chuck Brantley not playing, Malik Spencer, obviously Dylan Tatum being out, uh, Marion Smith was out as well. I mean, uh, I know I'm forgetting Chance Rucker was out as well. Obviously, a lot of those guys have been out for quite a while. But just that defensive backfield playing a lot of young guys. Glad they're getting reps. But when you need two more wins to get to a bowl game, and this is the result that we get and kind of having. I mean, their wide receivers didn't really go off. It was really Pat Bryant. Zachary Franklin had, you know, seven catches for 44 yards. But Pat Bryant killing you four for 135 and a touchdown with a 57-yard one mixed in there. I mean... That's, I'm not putting it all on them. I mean, they're young guys. I mean, what are you supposed to do? They, you know, have not seen a lot of on-field snaps because they're young guys and they were further down in the depth chart. I mean, I mean, you got to give them credit for hanging in there, but I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. It's a tough situation to be in with that many banged up guys. And I'm not blaming this loss on injuries by any means from Michigan State. I mean, uh, listen, I need to pull it up here with the third down, uh, the third down offense was just absolutely atrocious if uh third down conversions two for 15 fourth down four for 16 so I, maybe they were just trying to up that fourth down percentage but three for or two for 15 for michigan state eight for 15 for illinois i think jonathan smith said that post game that's the game right there um it gets us some individual stats and this is kind of where i'm gonna get into maybe some of the positive that we can take into the last two games because, yes, as much as you may hate it, I am taking a little bit of positives out of this game. The first one, and probably the most important, is I'm taking Aiden Childs. 23 for 40, 256, two touchdowns. Had the nice 52-yard bomb to Isaiah Johnson um, in the first half to even the score at 7-7. Isaiah Johnson, 3 for 70, one touchdown. Montori Foster, 6 for 76. He had a couple nice plays, had a nice move up the sideline. Faked like he was conceding, getting tackled, and then bursted up the sideline even more. Nick Marsh is incredible every time he touches the field, but what did we talk about pre-game? In the preview video, uh, last couple games, four catches, five catches. It, we needed to see him seven-plus targets, nine targets, plus, like the Iowa game, four targets, or I'm sorry, four catches, 58 yards. I know I don't have his targets right up in front of me. I know there was one that he was dropped that was kind of Right there, I'm not going to get on the kid about dropping a ball, like, whatever. But, um, yeah, needs more receptions than four yards. I'm not blaming that. I want to make that abundantly clear. I'm not blaming that on Nick. But, you know, need to create some more opportunities, as I said. He is your most talented player on the entire roster. Get him the ball. Let him make plays. Um, four for 58 still isn't too bad. We still just like to see him targeted a little bit more there. Really the only gripe that I have there and that has nothing to do with him. Um, running the ball, we're not doing the song and dance again and talking about everything because I just feel bad for, uh, Kron and Nate. It's a, a lot of it, like some of it. Yes, you have to put some of the blame on them, but a lot of it is just the offensive line cannot get a push. A lot of 
Aiden Childs led us in rushing again. I think this is second or third time this year. Leading us in rush, rushing 12 attempts, 71 yards. Had a nice 19-yard run, too. Yes, the I think it was his first run of the game. He did have a fumble that wasn't a fumble. Thankfully, they reviewed it, called it back, you know, whatever, and got the call right. But, I, I mean, we need to see more of that going forward. You know, I think that's the what the success is for Michigan State going forward. Aiden Childs running the ball, getting Nick Marsh the ball. Any way you can going forward, try to get a try to get two wins these last two weeks. That's what you need to do. Success this season is going to a bowl game for Michigan State. The frustrating part is there was more opportunities to get more out of this season, and I think that's the frustrating part. Last thing I do here have here in my notes. I'm not throwing this into the positives. I would throw this in the negative. Um, the analytics that we already talked about, touching back on the end of the first half, uh, I wrote down in Jonathan Smith's post game presser that. He said it was the analytics, why he didn't go for it there, because it was third and three. He didn't call a timeout because they have a higher percentage of getting it on third and three. Uh, and if it was third and four to go, apparently that's what the analytics say to go for it. I could argue you weren't stopping them on third and 13, so might as well not take a timeout there. Try to, maybe you can stop them on third and three. Maybe they have a weird play call or something goes wrong and you can get a stop there. I did thought that they stopped the run decently well. I mean, Josh McRae, three touchdowns, but that's more of, I mean, he had a long of 30, but that's more of goal line stuff. I mean, th 39 yards for uh, Lawfrey, I hope I said his name right. Valentine, 21. Like I said, Luke Altmaier uh, from the quarterback position, 20. And they did a decent job. I mean, 4.5 against a not a great running team isn't super good, but... At times, they made some plays. So anyway, two games left Friday night against Purdue. Prime time. I know a lot of people that are not Michigan State and Purdue fans cannot wait to tune into that one. Um, but I will, of course, be in the stadium. Then next Saturday, Senior Day, as I'm recording right now, game time just came out 3.30 in Spark Stadium for Senior Day. So that'll be one 12 o'clock game the entire year. I uh, We talked about it a little bit here on this, on this show here before. I am not a fan of 12 o'clock games, so I am perfectly okay with that. But it's going to be a cold one these next two weeks. So if you're heading into Spartan Stadium, make sure you bundle up. But anyway, I am excited to see how this team responds the next two weeks. Um, it does sound like they aren't going to get any of the Charles Brantley, Malik Spencer, Amarian Smith, Dylan Tatum, Chance. It sounds like all of those guys are done for the regular season. We'll see if they make a bowl game, if they can make it back for that. But So some guys are going to have to step up, and this offense is going to have to step up and score more than they have. And hopefully Purdue this Friday is a good way to get that thing started. But anyway, that'll do it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.